Oh, hi there. Um, again, I've been up to my uh, 30 seconds worth of research before I um, uh, go about to make a video on a serious subject. Hold on, I'm just going to readjust my camera here. Okay. So I watched part of an episode on uh, on the television of Power and Politics. Rarely ever watch it because it's always stupid. And there isn't much ever said, ever. Um, but if you read between the lines, there is a little bit more that is said than you might think offhand. Even though, essentially, nothing really got said. Anyway, in this particular episode of Power and Politics, rarely ever watch the show, um, they were talking about the Trans Mountain Pipeline, uh, which affects uh, everybody in British Columbia. And um, Vasi Kalapios, uh, the hostess, was asking who's going to front the bill for this. Is somebody going to buy the pipeline because uh, July 22nd, the deadline, had passed. Admittingly, this morning, I didn't know that. I didn't care to know because these decisions are made by assholes. And, you know, um, obviously, what's the point of getting the butt end of a story? There's just, like, I'm not going to clamor for, you know, like, a, something that uh, there's not much to. Anyway, um, Vasi Kalapios was interviewing um, the minister of uh, what the hell is he? I, I did a video on this talking about that kind of crap before. But you know, the minister of uh, natural resources, Amajit Sohi. Uh, he's a Sikh India, not born in Canada. He's, he's actually got a bit of a Wikipedia page that uh, talks about uh, his involvement with um, the Sikh uprising. I think it was in the 80s or something like that. And how he'd come to Canada, to Edmonton, and didn't know any English. No surprise there. And now he's risen to the ranks and he's a uh, Minister of Natural Resources. Um, they said that uh, Amajit had gone back to India and was apprehended by the police over there, beaten, tortured, blah, 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 sleep deprivation, yada, yada, yada. And you go, why do we have people like that in power? He's obviously got a hardcore bias. I mean, okay, true enough, there isn't anything he can get up to that nobody would know about, but uh, that isn't the point. The point is, you can't put people in power because they go, wah, 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 this happened to me before. No, fuck off. You gotta prove that you're intellectually capable and worthy of the position. And this shithead doesn't look like it, if you want my honest opinion. There are a few things I didn't like about this guy, and I didn't like him before, and I especially don't like him now. And keep in mind, this is only having watched him for five minutes on the television. Five whole minutes, greasy, balding, uh, looks like he'd sell it to anybody for a dollar, and, you know, part of the people who were responsible for him getting his beatings were these uh, giant massive landowners in the part of India that he went to, which was a very poor part, which is, you know, very nondescript. Everywhere is poor in India. They got other shit going on over there, though, right now, because uh, China Uncensored, uh, Chris Chaphud, um, released a video explaining uh, the ballistic missile program over there, which is serious stuff for them. So anyway, yeah, this guy, he's talking to Vasi Kalapios like, it doesn't matter what you think, blah, 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 I'll talk right over you. And, you know, obviously nobody was stopping him from doing that. And... You know, uh, there might be several factors to it. I mean, Vasi Kalapios, from what I saw, was a yes woman. She, She's on power in politics, but she's a yes woman. She just says, um, uh-huh, yep, yep, to doesn't matter what anyone's saying on her program. Uh, because that's her job description. That's what she has to do when she's on power in politics. Because it's not about power in politics, the show. That's the name, but that's not really what it's about. It's about, you know, giving a grumbled version of events, which Amaji was especially good at. She asked two critical questions, and 
When Armajit went to go to speak, he didn't even come close to answering either of them. And I know when people got words coming out of their mouths and they're not actually saying anything, and they're not very intelligent when they do it. I mean, once you understand that sometimes when somebody's talking, that there's nothing of any noteworthy um, information coming out of their mouth, you stop listening to them. Like a guy like that, if he started talking to me like that, I'd walk away from him. I'd be like, fuck off, we're done here. Um, anyway, the two critical questions. One, well, this is a two-parter. Um, she was asking, the, the July 22nd deadline has passed. Are there any buyers? He didn't have an answer. Of course he didn't. Because there aren't any. Um, and, you know, they were going, oh, well, Canadians are going to have to foot the bill for this. And, you know, um, all he kept saying was, oh, this will give Canadians thousands of jobs. Blah, 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 blah. And, you know, uh, yeah, thousands of jobs to whom, might I ask? Because that is a good question. Whom are going to get these jobs that he talked about? And not that it compensates for the billions and billions of dollars that it's going to cost to spend, or the fact that guys, I'm a cheat who um, came from Edmonton, along, actually, with uh, Falassi Kalapios, who got her career going in, uh, I think, Calgary, uh, and that propelled her career, so she might have a bit of bias. Uh, Alberta versus British Columbia probably does. Um, there's a lot of money to be made here, and there's also a lot of money for them to steal. And Amajit Soli, he is exactly the type. That's exactly what he's doing. I wouldn't trust that guy to make a Subway sandwich, let alone you know, be in charge of the Minister of Natural Resources. And some people go, oh, you better not say that, man. Some Sikh guy will be pissed off with you. Fuck off. Canada's a white man's country. I don't have to be afraid of a fucking Sikh. I mean, it's rude, I admit, but uh, they say worse things about us, so why, why should I care? And on national television, after all Trudeau's fucking rhetoric about LGBT, feminism, he, he, he proclaims he's a feminist and all this sort of stuff, and he lets his Minister of Natural Resources talk to Velassi Kalapios like that. Like, he talked to her with no respect at all, steamrolled over her, and treated her as though she wasn't entitled to know anything. I mean, that may be true, in this extent that she couldn't go tell anybody on the television, because as I said, she's a yes woman, she has to be in that position. So was uh, Solomon when he was there, and every other person who's ever been on power in politics. They're all yes people in, in, the, um, uh, in the news stations, particularly in Canada, and more or less in the States as well, just they do a little different over there. Um, and it's just like, I don't want to hear the mainstream rhetoric and then see the contradictions in mainstream rhetoric in the mainstream. And that's what I saw. This guy had no respect at all for Velassi Calapios. What, because she didn't go to India and get beaten in a jail cell? Is that what you need from her to get her respect, you sack of shit? The fuck is wrong with you? Um, okay, so there's that. Um, second question. Second question she goes is um, how much more is this going to cost than what your estimates are? What is the limit that Canada is willing to spend? And he started jabbering on, didn't fucking give an answer, typical uh, Indian style. He started talking gibberish and things like that and uh, going, oh, this great thousands of jobs, repeating himself, and, you know, uh, to him, like, if I have to deal with people like that, I'm going to be like, you learn to speak fucking English properly, and if you can't speak fucking English properly, get the fuck out of my sight. Uh, because I'm not listening to somebody who's just going to jabber and it don't make any sense. Because that's what he was doing. And if he thought he was being smart by going, words are coming out of my mouth, I don't understand what I'm talking about, and I'm pretending to speak their language. Uh, no, 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 you're a fucking monkey. A monkey from a dirt poor fucking hand-ass wipe country, and we don't have to respect you because you got beaten up by savage monkeys in an administration back in India. 
and you come here with your fucking biases and tell us what that we're not entitled to know what's going on in an important decision like this with billions of dollars and you are definitely going to have your greasy seek hands into that cookie pot that's for damn sure stealing as much money as you can nobody believes you're not doing that why do you think the government was so adamant about pushing this program it isn't about the jobs it's not about Canadians it's not even about the resources because the thing is Canada just doesn't have much in the way of resources as far as natural gas oil or any of that stuff we just don't have it um, and I make videos about that too and that's not where our strong suit is but it is a place where you know advanced projects can be brought about and a lot of money to be made and that's the reality of this Canada as a government is no more than a corporation a lot of people look at Donald Trump and his presidency and go oh he was a business tycoon blah 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 and now he's the president yada 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 and America is a business like how Brad Pitt said in his stupid fucking movie all of Brad Pitt's movies are fucking stupid, but that, I don't, like, I didn't even watch that movie. I just, you can't be on the internet and not have heard some idiot talk like that before. And, um, yeah, so there, there we go. We've got Justin Trudeau, corporate interest in mine. And corporate interest and Canadian interest are two different fucking things, especially if you're bringing outside political leaders to be in positions in cabinet in Canada. So fuck you, Trudeau, and you're hypocritical. You let your fucking seat guy come in and talk to Velasquez Clapios like that? Fuck you! And, um, you know, like, this is just plain as day obvious stuff to me. Like, I only watched it for five friggin' minutes and I already could detect what the problem was. Uh, I know it's not what some people want to hear. Some people want to hear. But Ryan, you're supposed to bend over backwards for them because he's blah, 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 blah. Um, no. He wouldn't do that over there if we were the reverse situation. Not in a million years would they ever do that. And our government is telling us, no, your rights come second as a, as a white Caucasian male. And their rights come before yours because they come from such a horrible country that does horrible things to itself. Excuse me, but... No. Fuck off with your fucking modern day PC bullshit. Because it just, your rhetoric doesn't stand up to scrutiny. It really doesn't. And it doesn't take much to dismantle it. It's like a poster you see on the wall, not this one of course, but a poster you see on the wall that you could just come along and rip right off. Like a, a Justin Trudeau poster. Yeah, if I had a Justin Trudeau poster, I'd, you know, I'd rip it in half. I seriously would. I couldn't, I can't stand that guy. Is the biggest hypocrite president we've ever, the president, prime minister, that we've ever had. And, um, yeah, anyway, yeah, the two main questions that uh, Balassi Calapios was asking, he was not answering. And what is the point of bringing somebody on the show uh, who's not going to answer the questions that he's given? And it's not even like he gave kind of an answer that, said something but wasn't too terribly detailed or anything like that. He didn't give an answer at all. He didn't say anything. He said it everything and, you know, later on he could deny it kind of a way. And it's just like, there's no point of talking to somebody like that. I don't care if he's a big name in the cabinet or whatnot, even though he shouldn't be. Um, I mean, he may have earned, I guess I suppose he did, earned the trust of Justin Trudeau and the likes of him. But uh, that's all corporate interest, as I said, and not to the advantage of everyday Canadians. So Justin Trudeau's biased opinion should not be a factor as to when or why guys like Amajit are promoted to such positions. And going, well, he's the prime minister. He knows better and all this and he knows that and this. Perhaps, but that's because he keeps that information to himself to such an extent that he's an absolute paranoid about anybody knowing anything. Like, let's get real here. Well, the way he acts, if this were, you know, 60 years ago, he would probably be the uh, Canadian equivalent of Idi Amin. Uh, super paranoid, paramilitary, and all this other stuff. And it's just like... What I mean, like, 
Canadians are like nobody's no I don't hear anybody, you know, saying anything about this. I mean I mean of course according to the television, everyone was up in arms about the LGBTQ TFs blah, 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 blah. But uh, when it comes to things like this, you ain't, you're not hearing a lot of resistance. I mean, there was in the sense that there were British Columbians saying, we do not want this pipeline. I actually even heard some uh, British Columbians say that we should get the pipeline because it's better than it being delivered on railroad and things like that, which is something to consider. But um, the way I look at it is it's a pile of money being spent and we're going to get nothing out of it. Uh, you take the Olympics. Sidney Crosby and the Golden Goal. Did we get in anything out of it? No. Uh, did all of those uh, condos get built that got built? Did they sell? No. Um, and that's always what it is when they're talking big money uh, on the television. It's big money they're making at your expense. So I really don't give a rat's ass. Um, I mean, I think the pipeline should not go through on that premise on its own. And if John Horgan, if he can give him a lot of grief in doing it, because that's part of the thing is there's political repercussions. That's why no other companies are particularly interested in taking up this one. And you have to remember, it's not just that um, there are companies uh, not wanting to. There are companies that actually do want to buy it, but... Uh, who knows, they might be run by the Chinese Communist Party, and we don't want them around here. It's bad enough they own buildings downtown. Uh, no. This isn't StarCraft, they're not the Zerg, and they don't have their creep coming along. Of which they could, you know, create, um, you know, disgusting things and perpetuate, um, their, uh, influence in the area. No, 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 no. That's not what's going to happen. Because when, uh, I like, I don't, I don't want to sound like a, you know, like a, a Morpheus poster here or something like this. But uh, obviously, there are people who are dormant in their political thought process just because they're, you know, preoccupied on whatever it is they're doing. Whether it's fixing their hot rod, uh, whether it's fixing their hot broad or whether it's eating their hot steak um, they're, they're preoccupied with their own thing going on and that's all good and well but that's a hobbit mentality thinking if I don't if if I don't pay attention to it nothing will happen to me no you're a dumb fucker if you think that a dumb fucker uh, you really ought to be more cognizant of it just so that you know ten down years down the road if things do go to shit because they always could do uh, you're not going, oh no, I didn't see this coming because I was too preoccupied. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's obviously the political uh, way. Some people think they'd rather be dormant. And um, there are people who um, take up political views that they don't actually agree with at all. They just go along with it because then they can learn more, they get invited to circles and learn even more, potential promotion and things like that. But everybody does have a breaking point as far as uh, how far they're willing to go for what they believe in. And uh, it is the wiser idea to just go, all right, there's a big asshole over there and this is the agenda they're wanting to push. And whether you like it or not, it's just not worth the trouble. Um, but, on my tiny little YouTube channel, I am going to criticize Justin Trudeau's government, and he stands about a hobbit's chance in bringing the ring to Mordor, uh, but I would uh, vote for Andrew Scheer, <laughs> not because, uh, you know, um, uh, it wouldn't be a Stephen Harper government, because it would be, like, Stephen Gar Harper would be, you know, the emperor, and, um, Andrew Shear would be Luke Skywalker, <laughs> but I think we'd be better off. I really do. Like Andrew Shear is hilarious for one thing, and that's always a point in my book. He doesn't come across as the ladies' man like Justin Trudeau did. And by the way, if you uh, were in, watching him in high def, you'd see he's got a lot of uh, pop marks on his face and things like that, and things that aren't particularly attractive about him. He's got a funny-shaped nose and things like that. Probably got it when he did his boxing a little bit. 
uh, slightly funny, but it's not that bad. It's not like Owen Wilson funny shaved nose, but it, you know what I mean. And he was considered, you know, hot stuff when he was a younger guy too. And it's just like, hey, what about that nose ear? <laughs> That's an important part of uh, the male face or anybody's face to determine whether they're attractive or not. And by the way, as I know on this camera, my nose does look a little bit bigger, but this is a Cyclops camera, so got to take that into consideration. My nose isn't that big. Anyway, um, this is all important stuff, okay? So I think a shakeup in management next year is important. And it's important for the reason that you may not like Stephen Harper. And I said before, like, look, it's hard to find compliments about the guy unless you find somebody worse than him. But the thing is, if you keep shaking up the government until you get one with a modicum of something you like about them, that way they can't get deeply rooted and institute any of their policies on a large scale. You give Justin Trudeau another term, and he'll be able to do that. Whereas an Andrew Scheer government, and the fellow's only a year younger than me, older than me, I should say, um, he won't have time to establish uh, his uh, operational capabilities. You give Justin Trudeau another year, and a lot of people will be because uh, the, the TV's been telling him to, um, he caters to other uh, demographics as far as uh, other people and other voters. And uh, he's seen as a new face, although he's not. He's corrupt. He's, uh, he's got his biases and differences, his corruption, porcelain face, as I described. And, um, you know, um, I just think if you're not satisfied with the government, you don't like any of the parties that are out there, you just keep shaking them up until something comes out of the woodwork that, you know, you can work with. And right now, Justin Trudeau's Liberal Party is not one you can work with. So although the Tories and the fact that it would be Stephen Harper controlling Andrew Scheer um, have a bad reputation, the thing is, it's the shakeup that's important. And none of the other parties are worth considering because they're just, they don't have the power. Let's just get real. They don't have the power. So anyway, to wrap up my summary of this episode of Power and Politics that I watched, that's it. Anyway, talk to you guys later. Have a good one.